Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree, and welcome to the assembly video for our Woodland Whispers card. I've got all of my pieces cut out, as should you. Very simple, quick little card that has a beautiful scene of uh, a little fox among some birch trees. I have my card base here in front of me. It's already folded. This is the little insert that's gonna go inside where you can write your little message, do a little print to cut. Uh, whatever it is that you want to do, we're going to get that popped in place first. Then we're going to take some time to put together some of the little individual pieces that make up all of the little details on our beautiful card. You want to make sure that as you're placing this, just make sure that you have a nice even border going all the way around. Just sort of slide that into place, press it down. There we go. Okay, and this is the face of our card here. We have a few elements. This is the uh, little background paper that we decided to go with to sort of create the illusion of a cloudy sky. Okay, so we're gonna put that down, get that into place, go easy on the glue here so we don't warp it. And this is going to take up the entire face of the card base. Okay, I'm going to do this with it folded in half just so that I get it lined up properly. Use your fingers to kind of feel for the edges. There we go. Perfect. Okay, next we're going to take this layer here and that's going to go flat on here. Really, uh, most of this is just to help you with placement. Only the trees are really going to be visible here. Okay, and you have the ability to add foam squares to add as much or as little dimension to this card as you'd like. There's really no wrong way about it. Um, you could probably go as much as maybe three layers of foam squares. I personally think that might be too much because of how small this card is. I don't know that we want to pop it out that much. I think I'm going to just try to add maybe one layer of foam. And I'll show you where. Now we've got a lot of surface area to cover here, so try to act swiftly. Okay, and just focus on getting maybe the top or the bottom aligned first, like so. And then the rest of it should just sort of fall into place. Pop that down onto your surface very gently. Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right, now we have some layers that are gonna kind of create a background palette for us. These are our beautiful birch leaves at the top here. So let's get that in place. You don't have to worry about getting glue on every single inch of it. And don't forget to take some time to ink some of these pieces to really make them pop. Now this I just inked around here where the cutouts are. I tried to avoid the ink around the perimeter because I feel I felt like it was uh, felt like it kind of looked weird to ink the edge of something. So I only inked the parts that are actually visible in the scene. Okay, and that's up to you. You can do it however you want. Okay, next, we're gonna throw this layer down. Okay, and I did strategically emboss some of the layers. This one I did not because it's most, mostly hidden and I didn't wanna do too much embossing all over the place. Okay, so I kinda, kinda picked and choosed, picked and chose, picked and choosed the layers that I embossed so that I didn't overdo it. It's a nice little contrast to have some layers embossed and some layers flat. I'm just going to line that up like so. And you can see that beautiful inking there at the top. And that is beautiful on its own without, pre without adding anything else really. Okay, next we're going to start building. Now let's see here. We've got our tree layer here. Okay, so we have a backing layer 
and then the actual um, the actual pattern. I found a really cool pattern piece that almost mimics what a birch tree looks like. So I think the best way to do this, since we have so much detail here, is to glue the bottom, the flat part here, down first, including our little our little fox. Okay, and then the trees are somewhat free flowing. They're almost um, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Independent. So we can always kind of glue those down after the fact, after we get this layer glued down. Just match that up as accurately as you can. Press that down. And then that way we can work on these, these two sections separately without having to try to glue all of this in one fell swoop. Because that could be, it could be a little difficult. So as I mentioned, we can literally just peel this back and begin applying glue on the little tree section here. And you don't need to put glue on every single inch, just try to cover it as much as you can. And if it helps to use little dots, feel free to do that too, that's fine. Okay, and then the cool thing is you can literally just probably just drop it right into place since it's already anchored at the bottom. Okay, I have a little bit of that back color showing through, but it's since it's so light, you're not really going to see it anyway. I'm not overly concerned about it. We'll do the same thing on the other side. This card should go together pretty quick. The machine's doing most of the work with all the little details and such. Do spend some time inking. It'll look amazing. There we go. Okay, just drop that right into place. If you need to give it a little nudge, that's fine. There we go. Okay, beautiful. So this might be the layer that that I use some foam squares on to kind of create some separation and some shadows on this layer against the layer behind it. Okay, next, we gotta put this layer down as that is going to give our little fox silhouette its color so that he doesn't blend in with the trees. So let's do that. And then we're gonna apply the leaf section of our birches. There we go. So obviously we wanna match this up with the bottom as well as our little fox. Make sure you get that lined up as accurately as you can, like so. There we go. And try to match that up as accurately as you can. I have a little bit of that white showing through, but it almost looks like it's giving him a little backlight or maybe even a little bit of uh, white fur on the front of his chest. Okay, then we have our little leaf elements that are gonna go down next. And I did ink and also emboss these with a crackle embossing folder. And just need to match these up with their appropriate positions and locations. Make sure that's nice and flush along the side there. And this guy's gonna go right here. You can see how beautiful that contrast is. It's gonna look even better once we put it onto the full scene. There we go. And just do your best to match that up. So I went up to the Wisconsin Northwoods, and of course, you know, we only get to go for a few days, and it's really hit or miss if we get all the colors and all their glory, and despite what the report said, we missed it. I think we got there a little too early, and plus it was kind of kind of crummy, cold and rainy, so may not be the best vacation to take with, especially a baby on a boat. <laughs> I'm gonna wait till he gets a little bit older. That or just go up there in the summertime. It's really nice. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm just going through and applying the rest of the leaf portions. 
of the birch trees. Just line that up as accurately as you can. Beautiful. And we have a few little guys here. Just a few tiny little guys here. Go easy on the glue. These are really delicate, small little pieces that do not require that much adhesive. Especially these tiny, tiny little guys. Okay, just match that up. There we go. And finally, this little, this tiny little piece, just make sure that you have it aligned correctly before you put it down. It almost looks like a symmetrical piece, but it's not. So just be very careful. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so with that in place, this is what I mentioned I think we're going to um, elevate with some foam squares because I think adding a little bit of shadow to that is going to make it look really nice. So this might be the only layer that I add foam squares to. Let me get my foam squares out. And I'm going to go with my black ones here, even though I have some bigger ones, but um, I do need to reorder some new foam squares here. So we'll start in the corners here and here. The cool thing about foam squares, I'm sure many of you have heard me offer this tip many times, is that you can cut them to size. We may not need to. I'm going to strategically place these in the thicker little areas among the leaves. And then what we'll do is we'll give it a little, what I call a little push test to see how sturdy everything is sitting. But again, you can take, you can take a scissor and you can very easily cut these and make them smaller to make them fit among some of the thinner areas, like these trees, for example. We'll just add one there. Okay, I think we'll put one here. So I keep that nice and sturdy. Put one here. So the flip test, we'll flip it over, just kind of start pushing down on it and see where it gives. If it gives too much in any of these areas, we may want to reinforce it with some additional foam squares, but I think that that is pretty good. Now I notice here, that I have a little area where this little area here where the pattern part of the birch did not adhere very well to the solid part. So I'm just going to take and with a scrap piece of paper, just put a little bit of glue on that paper and paint a little bit of glue between those two layers to help that stick a little bit better. Okay. So and go ahead and peel off the backings of our foam squares and get this applied to the card. We have a few more layers that we need to apply to it. We gotta build some cute little mushrooms, add a pop of red to the whole scene and some browns to even it out. Okay, so here we're gonna Take this, I'm going to line this up with the bottom first. Now the foam squares are mostly, they're pretty forgiving. So if you don't get it in the exact spot you want it the first time, you can very gently peel it back. There we go. Okay, so you can see a little bit of a shadow there that really just makes this pop and I love that. Okay, cool. So next, you gotta build a few more little layers here. Uh, let's see. Yep. So uh, we included two layers for this just because it's, it's sort of large and we want it to be pretty sturdy. And also if you wanted to add foam squares to this layer as well, um, having that extra layer will help kind of keep it nice and stiff and sturdy. Uh, but either way, even if you glue it down flat, and I'm still trying to decide if I want to add foam squares to this. I'm going to pop this on there and take a look and see how I feel about it. Yeah, I don't think it, I'm not so sure it needs it. You want to kind of be careful about where you place your glue on this layer. You know what? I'm just trying to figure out here. We should add a little, you know what? I could probably just go with it. It's not that much thicker. I kind of like it. 
That last layer though, I'm going to make sure I'm putting my foam squares. You know, it's probably a better idea to actually put the foam squares on this layer, obviously. We'll peel that off. Let's just do it. I think it'll make it pop even more. Like I said, you can glue it down. That last layer though with the mushrooms, I am definitely going to just glue that down flat because I think we're gonna have too much dimension on this card. Okay, I'm gonna give it the old push test. Make sure that it doesn't bend and bow too much in any of these little areas. I think this is more than enough as far as our little foam squares go. This card is gorgeous. Coming together really nice. And it's not really, you know, there's no specific um, caption on this. I thought that it'd be a great idea just to put whatever caption or whatever sentiment you want on the inside rather than putting it on the outside. Let's just keep this, keep the scene as it is. And you know, now that I'm looking at it, I kind of wish I put one more little foam square back here. And it's not too late. You can always just pop one in there. There we go. So feel free to go a little bit heavier with the foam squares wherever you see fit. There we go. That's much better. Okay, cool. So final layer here. We've got this layer that's going to go right here. Kind of give that a two-tone look. Add a little bit of contrast. And then we have some mushrooms to assemble. And no big deal. That one's going to go real quick. Okay, there we go. Pop that right in the bottom, make sure it's flush with the left and right hand side. Beautiful. And let's build some little mushrooms. Okay. So here we have, there's a little set on the left, a little set on the right. And we have this one is going to go like this. We're going to put this down first. There's a red layer that's going to go on top of the mushroom on the left, but not on the right. We've got two different colors of mushrooms. Go very easy on the glue here. And just match that up like so. Press that down. Then find, where do you go? Oh, it's the larger one, sorry. Okay, whoops. And this little guy is going to go right here. And then we have a small one that's going to go right there. Just make sure that you have the texture side out if you're using textured cardstock, which I'm sure most of you are. Okay, so once we have that, we have a little bit of, I guess, dirt or the forest floor, I guess you can call it. It's going to go right here at the bottom. Just make sure that it's nice and lined up with the very edges. There we go. <clears throat> and this one I'm going to glue down flat. Just throw a little bit of glue. On this entire little section. And this is going to go on the bottom left hand corner, like so. Beautiful. That looks fantastic. I'll give that a second. Okay, and then we're going to head over to the other side. Oh boy. So we're going to first put down this little red piece. Uh, made it kind of bigger just so it's easier to handle this little mushroom. And it's going to go down like so. Just line that up. Just like that. We have a brown piece that's going to go on top of that, but we'll leave the red part of the mushroom top alone so that we have that beautiful red there. 
So just pop that right on there. You could probably emboss this little piece too if you want. Like I said, I think I have enough embossing going on on the card, so I'm just gonna leave it alone. Okay, and we have this large part of the mushroom here. Let's go easy, maybe just a few little dots and then use the tip of your glue nozzle to kind of spread that around. You don't need a whole heck of a lot of glue for these little pieces. A little goes a long way. Line that up, get a little scoot if necessary. There we go. And finally, one more little brown mushroom. Spread that glue around. Pop that into place. There we go. Okay. And then, of course, this one's going to go on the bottom right-hand side of our scene. It's very easy on the glue here. And we'll pop that right in there. Just make sure that the right side of this mushroom where it's kind of cut off is all lined up with the side of the card as well. Bottom should be flush with the bottom. And there you have it. Okay, beautiful little woodland scene in the peak of autumn. And there you have it. I love that card. It's so pretty. Okay. All right, so of course we have a, we have a little envelope to go along with it. And I have that here in front of me, I already folded, pre-folded everything. Um, we, as usual, have this little two-tone sort of thing going on with the uh, envelope. Okay, now this one's, this one's a little weird. Not weird, but you're gonna have to put this right in the center, which means that we are going to have to apply our glue to the perimeter of the secondary color here. So go easy there. <clears throat> and then what I would do so that we don't get glue in spots where we don't need it, I do want to put a little bit of glue around this little motif here with these oak leaves, just like that. I'm gonna take this piece, and again, this is just going right dead center. Try to maintain a nice even border all the way around, press that down, and then that way we don't get any glue in any of these open cutout areas. Okay, there we go. We can take, bring the two flaps in and just apply a little bit of glue right along the inside of the flap, starting at this point here, all the way down. Then bring this up, press down, and just hold that for a moment. Whoops. A little too much glue there, but that's okay. Okay, and then you can see there's a little, uh, You can see there's a little score mark there, and that is for the placement of our little mushroom. So go ahead and apply a little bit of glue to this final little mushroom here. And that is gonna go right on the little flap. There we go. And it's gonna go right in between those little markers there. So that's gonna do it for our beautiful little card. Again, very versatile, mostly just because, you know, there's really no specific caption or anything to limit where and how you can use it. But that's beautiful. And as usual, fits beautifully into our envelope. And is ready to go. So it's going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure that you uh, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. While you're there, hit the little bell so you get notifications anytime we release a new product, whether it be paid or free. And if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I'd love to see it. And so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Official. That's where you'll find myself and over 46,000 other dreamers that inspire us daily. So hope you guys enjoyed it, and as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos, and please consider hitting that subscribe button. 
Also, don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where you'll find over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly tutorials. I'll see you in the craft room.